What's up guys, Alex Lou here, giving you your weekly Angular tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to post to an API, and I'm going to show you the code. The code will be posted on the YouTube link, on the description comments, so you will have this code available if you want to take it out for a test drive. Now, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to post to an endpoint, which I found, which allows you to just give it give it uh, test test posts uh, without any type of uh, problems. So this particular endpoint allows you to post a body, a JSON body, and it actually gives you a response as well. In this example, I have three properties here: title, body, user ID, which I've just populated with test data. Uh, no authorization header is necessary. You can just post this bad boy up. And if I click on send, we get this as a response. So we're always going to get back this ID 101 as a response. Again, I didn't promise this is going to be robust. We just basically want to send a post uh, using HTTP verb post request and have this return back this body of JSON. So let's take a look at the code now that we are able to post, you are able to see how, how this post works. The first thing I want to do is I want to create a component called post example, which I have already done for you. And this particular post example has a selector called post example, and it also has an HTML file with it as a view. For this example we're only going to import the component interface and the on init now we're not really going to do anything on on init because we're actually going to post when we click a button so i just do it as at a habit then we're also going to include our data service from our data service class so actually, let's take a look at that right now so you can see what that actually looks like. So if we go back, and we've written a get. If you looked at my video for get, you will see the example. So in this example, we have a URL called post URL. We have this particular endpoint, which we got from our postman URL, right? the one that I found. I created a property and we're going to use this URL to post a body which is going to be an object and then we're also going to pass in some options for this example. This HTTP options is actually just headers that I can pass in. In this particular example I've created a variable it's a, an, an object and this particular object has a headers property of type HTTP headers which is actually something we're importing in our service class so this is something new this is something new now uh, we're also importing a post data and response well we don't really need response data. we're, we're going to import post data because we're going to need that because we're actually going to create an object out of this body of json so i'm going to actually create a bot an object out of this because i don't want to i don't want to pass in each property as an individual argument i actually just want to pass an object with these properties so it, it's a lot cleaner and as I was getting back to this before, we've looked at this data service class before. So if you haven't, go to check out my video uh, on the get, an HTTP get, a simple HTTP get example. And you can see a lot more of, of this particular class. Again, I'll post this on, a, um, on the YouTube description. And this is a service class, so it is injectable. We use the attribute injectable. Um, which we're using as a provider on our app module. Now, uh, we're going to, now in this service class, we're going to use a, uh, an argument. We're using a parameter called postD, 
of type post date. And we'll go into the definition of this class in a couple of minutes because this class lies in this post date object. So I've created object classes for that. What we're going to do is when we call the add post from our service class, we're going to return the observable that from HET client. And it, again, it's a cold observable. So even though we're doing the post here, it's not actually do making the API call. So you, that's something you have, you have to remember and get used to. With a promise, those of you that come with from promise land, it's a joke. Those of you that come from promise land may think that this will actually create the API call immediately. Uh, it, it does not. It does not. This is a, it's going to return an observable. It's cold. It's freezing actually because it's not going to do anything. It's just going to return back an observable object. And in the Angular HTTP client post method, again three parameters: the URL, which we sh which I showed you, which is the endpoint, the object that we're going to pass in. So it's just uh, the body, right? The post body, and this is the options that we also may want to pass in as a header, right? Because, and I show you this because maybe some t maybe you may have a situation where you may want to pass an authorization token, uh, and this is the way to do it. You would pass it in here. Obviously, you got to make it a little cleaner, um, handle a little bit of more uh, errors. But again, I'm making this a short video, so I'm not going to go into errors in this particular video. I will probably do that in, in probably the future. So easy. We return an observable. We make our call a cold observable. And this is our data service class. Now if we go back to our original component, right? We also created a two objects, the post data and resp data, which lies in post data OBJ. That is defined as this class which has a title a body and a user ID now this represents the JSON that I'm going to send in the body that's pretty simple enough and then this interface the response data that is actually what I'm getting back so I'm gonna get back this JSON as a response and I'm gonna bind it to this particular interface the refs data easy enough right once to send the other ones to receive when somebody clicks my button so if we look at the front end it's gonna look like this and maybe you can get a visual so the visual looks like this so it's gonna say posting data to an API I'm going to have a returned ID which is what I have here and when I get back this data it will bind, it will do a property bind on it on my data variable, which we've declared over here. So where that's actually going to change, right? That's going to change because if we look at the observable, once we subscribe to it, this will be set to whatever is coming back. Well, let's not, let's not uh, jump ahead too soon yet. I just want to show you how the interface looks. So the interface looks like that. This button right I've defined as a I have a click event here so we have binded an event those of you that are paying attention event binding right types of binding remember angular types of binding so we have an event binded with our button and click event and we're just when we click on the post command this will trigger and now we instantiate a new object, right? Post data. We create a new 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 instance of post data. We assign the body some test data, the title and the user ID. So basically what I'm doing here, you can think of that as setting up the body here, sending sending the test data. Once I have that, then I can wrap this and I wrap this up. I pass it in as a parameter in my data service. It's injected, right? 
because it's a it's a it's a service provider I call the add post which we just saw a minute ago we pass in the post data right the JSON and then obviously we call subscribe once we subscribe because we are subscribing to the observable now we made it hot now this will now tr now go off and post to the API we're gonna assign our variable called res as a response data so remember I created a response interface which represents what's coming back so they these are, are binded now these are binded now so when it comes back I set this res parameter into my current property of rest data type now I have my my values in my in my object right and I'm gonna console.log what I got back so I should get back an idea of 101 it always returns a 101 so don't if you keep going crazy so if I keep sending this it's always gonna return a 101 no matter what you send it so once I get that back I'll just console.log and then I'm going to property bind to my data variable and I'm gonna property bind the ID that I get back which is 101 and then the title that I'm getting back so the title I'm getting back is foo right the title I'm getting back is foo um, and that's it and that's it and then once this is binded right uh, this should update and you should see the ID and the title that's coming back. So let's let's give it a shot. Let's give it a shot. So if I click on that, that came back, right? 101, some title. So 101, some title, right? It just gives you back the title that you sent it. So if I send some title, right, I'm going to get that back. So let's do that. There you go. So that's all it's doing. That's all it's doing. I click on that. I get a response. And I get the same title that I sent it. Right? Which is some title. And then the new ID property, which I have in my result data object. Right? Which we've created. And that's how you that's how you post. That's how you simple enough. Simple enough. So remember, you subscribe to your post, right? To your observable. Um, and then you assign whatever response you're getting back. If you are getting back a response, it, it doesn't really matter. And then this is the body where you would do your logic once you get the data back. Once you get the data back, so you you what do you usually uh, you would assign it to some type of property. You can assign it to property and then kind of like do property binding in the front end. Okay. Any questions? You can always email me or you can always uh, hit me up in the comments. I will post this example up on the YouTube description. And again, if you're confused by this, you can always send me a comment. I'll try and reply. Or you can always send me an email at parttimeadjunct at gmail.com. Remember, no ads on the road to more than a thousand subscribers. If you want to keep watching my Angular videos, subscribe to my video. Usually put in one or two videos a week. Thanks.